The waters of the west coast of Scotland are home to a wide variety of marine life, but few are as colossal or charismatic as the mighty basking shark. At up to 11 metres in length and 7 tonnes in weight, the basking shark is the second largest fish in the world, yet it feeds only on the minute animal plankton that blooms in abundance in our seas during spring and summer. At that time, you might well see a basking shark from a boat or a headland, swimming slowly along with its huge mouth wide open, filtering out plankton from the water that passes through its gill rakers. Basking sharks were extensively hunted in Scotland's waters until very recently, with the main areas being in the Firth of Clyde and around the coasts of the Inner and Outer Hebrides. The first records of hunting date from the 1760s, on the island of Canna, and here, Loch Ranza in the Firth of Clyde. In the 1940s, more modern vessels equipped with harpoon guns took to the seas in pursuit of the shark from factories at Port Rhee in the Firth of Clyde and the island of Soy off Skye, followed by other hunters from the island of Col and the port of Malig. By the 1970s, concern was being raised over the number of sharks that were being taken throughout the Northeast Atlantic, especially after dramatic declines in areas where sharks had been extensively hunted. But in 1994, the last shark was killed by a hunter in Scotland's waters. And in 1998, conservationists were finally able to celebrate when the basking shark was awarded protected status in all UK waters. By this time, the Marine Conservation Society had for some years been collecting records of shark sightings via their Basking Shark Watch project, where surface sightings reported by members of the public could be used to build up an idea of basking shark distribution and abundance around the UK. In recent years, long-distance boat-based surveys conducted by the Wildlife Trusts contributed to this database allowing a more complete picture to emerge through visiting remote areas where sharks might be underreported. These surveys identified two sites where exceptionally high numbers of sharks were sighted on a consistent basis, which have been accorded hotspot status as a result. These are the area around the island of Canna and the Hishkia Islet and the island of Col. At the two hotspot sites, sharks were also recorded in large numbers on a regular basis, with a day's best of 93 sharks at Col, and in big shoals, 73 on one occasion at Col and 50 at Heishkia on another occasion. And at both sites, sharks engaged in what may be courtship behaviour were recorded on numerous occasions, where groups of sharks swim close together in lines, often with their nose, dorsal fin and tail visible above the surface of the water. When they do this, the sharks often rub their noses and fins against the abrasive skin of their fellows, resulting in highly visible white markings that can even be seen underwater. And sharks in these groups were regularly seen breaching, which may also be connected to courtship activity. Despite the ban on hunting, basking sharks are still at risk of harm from human activities, such as entanglement in fishing nets or creel ropes. And in our increasingly busy waters, collision with boats can also be a problem, not just for the shark, but for small craft and their occupants too. Nobody wants to see disturbance or injury to basking sharks, or damage or risk to small craft for that matter. Watching such an amazing creature in the wild is a wonderful experience, which if carried out with care and respect for the animal, should leave behind nothing but positive memories. With this in mind, the Scottish Marine Wildlife Watching Code was developed to best explain how to watch basking sharks and other marine life from small craft safely and within the law. And Scottish Natural Heritage has supported specialised, wise training courses for commercial ecotourism operators to help them watch all marine life in a sustainable manner, including basking sharks. The groups of basking sharks recorded at the hotspot sites in Western Scotland may play an important role in the recovery of a population still classified as endangered. In order to protect the sharks within the hotspots, maps and leaflets have been created for small craft that may visit the sites. These maps highlight the seasonal presence of sharks at the hotspot sites and show shark awareness zones, 
where a slow speed and careful lookout are advised for all boat users. The hotspot sites so far identified are highly important, but evidence from the records left by the hunters and from boat-based surveys suggest that other sites exist on the west coast. We need to identify their whereabouts and develop appropriate conservation measures for them, as has been carried out at the existing hotspots. Scotland has a unique responsibility to safeguard these gentle giants, whilst at the same time allowing people to enjoy seeing them in the wonderful natural setting of the highlands and islands. Our aim is to secure their future, and so enable us all to enjoy the sight of one of our most iconic species, the basking shark, in Scotland's seas forever.